Hello Explorers! Today is 19th July 2019 and it's a big day for all the people who have always wondered about the beauty and mystery of the night sky. The day when we heard of the famous quote that's one step for a man and giant leap for the mankind. From a human thousands of miles away from planet earth who was witnessing our age-old question what is beyond our visuals when the sun hides in the cosmic beauty of darkness. This is the same date when 50 years back humankind marked a spectacular achievement in their space exploration journey. I thought what could be a best time to revisit some of the details about the NASA's moon landing project Apollo 11 to put a man on the face of the moon. The idea behind this log is to look at some facts and important details about the project which will help us to appreciate the complex engineering, dedication, fearlessness and a true spirit of space exploration that all the women and men behind the project undertook. If this can spark a small fire in the explorers like you who are listening this to look back and think why the hell we have become so stagnant in our thoughts and journey towards the unknown. A fire which can change our course for space exploration and humanity. Let's look at the Apollo 11 project specifics. So this is the project that was conducted by NASA of the United States of America and NASA stands for National Aeronautics Space Administration. So the objective of this project was to put man on moon, the first man on moon. And the date here, July 19, 1969 was the date of moon landing of this crew. And the total duration of this mission was eight days, which started with July 16, where the crew was launched from Earth, and July 24, when they came back to the Earth. The main crew members were Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. If you see on the top left corner, this was the insignia that the Apollo Mission 11 was designated with and this insignia was mainly designed by Neil Armstrong. I believe NASA allows the main crew members to design their own insignia for the mission. So let's look at the basic configuration of the Apollo 11 system. The main configuration consists of the rocket and the spacecraft. If you see here on the left this was the exact uh, rocket and spacecraft that was uh, sent to moon. So here on the bottom part is the rocket and on the top part sits a spacecraft. So the rocket that was chosen for this particular mission was a Saturn V three-stage rocket and if you want to quickly go through some of the basic components of Saturn V it was a three-stage rocket um, the first stage had kerosene, the second stage used liquid hydrogenous fuel and third stage used liquid hydrogenous fuel and liquid oxygen was the oxidizer for all the fuels. Apart from this some major components are the instrument unit uh, which is used to control the spacecraft completely and here is the Apollo command module this is where all the three astronauts uh, used to sit uh, and control the entire spacecraft and this is the lunar module where two out of three astronauts will descend down in the lunar module when they are above the moon to get here and then this part is sent actually to the moon. So let's try to understand the Apollo 11 rocket sequence. Uh, for ease what I have done is uh, here we have the earth and the moon which will help us to understand the orbital dynamics and on the left I have a small piece of earth and on the right I have a small piece of the moon which will help us to understand how the uh, rocket system is uh, ascending and descending basically. So let's start off from earth where we have our rocket assembly. Um, so the rocket again it has three stages and the Apollo module and the lunar module. So step one is the ignition of stage one which has kerosene as fuel and when the ignition of stage one happens uh, the job of stage one is to 
provide acceleration for two and a half minutes and move and help to move the entire system away from Earth's gravity. And after two and a half minutes, the stage one is kind of jettisoned towards Earth. It's thrown back on towards the Earth. And at this point of the time, stage two starts its acceleration. Now, as compared to where we are here in the Earth's atmosphere, when the stage two starts uh, its work, this is where kind of the stage one has jettisoned and stage two has started working around here. And when the stage two starts its ignition, the job of stage two is to provide further acceleration to the entire space assembly, which is to accelerate the system to 12,000 miles per hour speed. So once this acceleration is achieved at the orbit, we start revolving around the Earth and we start orbiting. And we have to achieve an orbit called as the parking orbit or like it's a comfortable orbit where we can just keep on looping around the earth and we have sufficient uh, speed in our vehicle once the speed is achieved the stage 2 is jettisoned now at this point of the time the thing that we have is stage 3 a rocket uh, the Apollo module and lunar module and when we are revolving around in the uh, parking orbit we have to find an a good point where we can start our journey towards the moon and at this point of the stage wherever we decided it the stage 3 starts its ignition the job of stage 3 ignition is to provide further acceleration where the entire spacecraft is accelerated to 25,000 miles per hour speed and once the acceleration is reached like assuming like this is where we have reached the acceleration at this point of the time the stage one is here stage two is here and stage three we have jettisoned it here we leave it alone and now this stuff is gone and at this point of the time the only thing that we have that's traveling in this path is our Apollo module which has all the three of three astronauts and we have our lunar module which is going to be sent to the moon at this point of the time we are traveling and once we have reached the moon's orbit and here again we have to achieve the orbit called as the parking orbit of the moon again which is a comfortable orbit for us to just keep revolving around the moon at this point of the time uh, the Apollo module separates itself and then turns 180 degree and attaches itself to the lunar module the reason for this is all the three uh, astronauts who are here kind of in this orbit right now have out of them two of three astronauts has to descend down in the lunar module and this is this is the vehicle that's going to do the touchdown on the moon and after a certain point of the time uh, what happens is uh, the Apollo module the command center and the lunar module separates itself Apollo modules continues its uh, orbit around this parking orbit of the moon and the lunar module separates itself and starts descending towards like it takes a different orbit and starts descending towards the moon so when the descent starts happening um, obviously the lunar module uh, comes and makes a touchdown at the moon uh, the key aspects of the astronaut is first to do the moon landing first of its kind and uh, raise their flag and and on top of it there are multiple of uh, scientific experiments that are done very critical for further exploration of the space and moon and all the experiments are conducted and after a certain point of time when all the activities are completed both the astronauts travel back inside the lunar module and also called as the bug and at certain point of time they eject back away from the moon and try to rendezvous at the point where the Apollo module is orbiting they both rendezvous and then in the parking orbit of the moon uh, the two astronauts who are in the lunar module transfer themselves back into the Apollo module 
and the lunar module is jettisoned. So at this point of the time, when there is a good uh, time for us to return back towards the Earth, um, another uh, the Apollo module will start making ignition and they will start traveling back towards the Earth. And at this point of time, uh, so this is a very critical time for the astronauts in the Apollo module because when they start making the re-entry in the Earth, there is a very small window of 40 mile radius, a small hole on Earth, which is very, very critical. If they miss that, they will go and just make a spring back jump and then possibly get lost in space or else the other thing that can happen is if they make a wrong decision they will just come so fast inside the earth atmosphere that, that they will basically burn off. So it's very critical and whenever they make uh, that uh, decision like they are going to re-entry towards the earth when, when the re-entry starts happening um, the re-entry happens and the Apollo module start descending towards the earth and it's pretty simple after that once the re-entry is made uh, just before two miles away from earth's surface the parachutes are deployed and the polar module drops in the ocean uh, in the earth from where they are reconnaissance with the ground troop and then they pick them up and then bring them back into a rehabilitation center for nasa some last thoughts about apollo 11 uh, are like it's been 50 years um, for us to have done something spectacular like that um, first of a kind in humankind but suddenly like after the polar programs were done I don't think we haven't we have explored or like put enough research and development efforts and money towards that area which is gonna help us grow further because with that one Apollo program we learned hell of the things about space and after that has been 50 years and it's pretty sad to see like we haven't been able to place a man on moon or like any other celestial body which is very very important I think I definitely understand the economics behind it like why do we need a man to go there and do things if a robot or the thing can do but for us to be a multi planetary species or what if something happens to earth the humankind has to evolve and it has to move forward I think I just feel happy whenever I hear like few people like Elon Musk and Brandon of Virgin um, Amazon guy is doing the blue uh, blue origin and these guys are putting a lot of efforts and private companies have taken up the button to move things forward and I think it's great and I think it's the way to go I think if we can collectively as humans stop fighting with each other stop spending too much money on defense um, with, uh, I completely understand defense is required but still if we can just save all that money and put towards something like this I think we all will be happy and we all will really find the value of being human we have like such a short span of life 60 years there is no need to fight with each other and just uh, work together and achieve a greater knowledge i believe greater knowledge is something that's gonna help us bring closer to each other and that's the way to even find god probably like the more knowledge we know the more closer we can get to god I hope I'll bring another log which I really like uh, soon. Thanks for listening. God bless you guys. Take care.